Because of its size and crushing depth, the ocean still remains largely unexplored. Even in the 21st century, much of the deep ocean remains a mystery. The deep ocean is generally defined as the depth at which light begins to dwindle, typically around 660 feet. By 660 feet, all the light is gone to our human eyes, and the temperature has dropped significantly. By 13,000 feet, the temperature hovers just below that of a refrigerator. The deeper a creature goes, the less food there is available, and the harder it is to survive. Despite this, the deep sea is home to an incredible variety of creatures, many that appear out of this world. Deepwater fish can be divided into different groups. There are pelagic fish that primarily live in midwater. Benthic fish rest on the seafloor. Benthopelagic fish live close to the bottom, but undertake short migrations into the water mass. Until the late 19th century, many people considered the great depths of the ocean too harsh to support life. In the early 1800s, European scientists began to probe the depths of the North Atlantic to see if they could find life in the deep sea. In the 1960s, a variety of submersibles were developed. Submersibles are small underwater vehicles that may be crewed or uncrewed. The deepest depth in the ocean is 36,070 feet, located at the bottom of the Mariana Trench. With the help of specialized submersibles, humans have been able to enter the Mariana Trench and even make it to the bottom. The ocean is divided into five depth zones. After 660 feet is the twilight zone. This area receives only faint sunlight and no photosynthetic organisms can survive. Many fish, squid, krill, and jellyfish are abundant in this zone. Many organisms are almost entirely translucent, in order to avoid casting a shadow for predators to see. Others are reflective, allowing them to disguise themselves against the light from above. Many animals in this zone have large eyes to cope with the dim light. About 90% of the world's fish, by weight, live in the twilight zone. For fish that have an air sac called a swim bladder, when they are fished out of their natural habitats, the air sac that they use to maintain buoyancy may expand when they rise. Because of the expansion of their air sac, there is a risk that their insides will be pushed out through their mouth, killing them. After 3300 feet comes the midnight zone, where the ocean is completely devoid of sunlight. However, many animals create their own bioluminescent light. For the creatures that still possess eyes, the eyes are highly light sensitive to see the light produced by other animals. The water temperature is near freezing at 39 degrees Fahrenheit. The pressure is over 110 times that at sea level. Many creatures in the zone have slow metabolisms so they can live with minimal food. Many rely on marine snow as their main food source. Marine snow is a shower of organic material falling from the upper areas of the ocean. Black hagfish, viperfish, anglerfish, and sleeper sharks are common in this zone. Vampire squid and dumbo octopuses can also be sighted at these depths. After 13,100 feet is the abyssal zone. Pressures in the zone can reach up to 600 times that of the surface. Despite this, tripod fish can still be found resting on the seafloor. Rat tail fish, squat lobsters, octopuses, and sea cucumbers can also be spotted. Animals at extreme depths are typically slow moving, slow growing, and long lived. They often conserve energy by waiting for food to come to them. Many have massive mouths and powerful teeth. Lastly, the deepest parts of the ocean are found in steep trenches. This is the Hadal Zone. It includes areas past 19,700 feet deep. 
some fish, crustaceans, worms, and specialized bacteria are adapted to survive in this zone. Lipperid snailfish are the most common hadal vertebrate species. These fish have the widest depth range of any marine fish family. In 2018, scientists officially described a snailfish at 27,000 feet below sea level. The body structures of fish that live in extreme depths are highly modified for the intense pressure. The body is squishy, with soft bones, no air-filled swim bladder, and very little muscle. If a fish at extreme depths is brought to the surface, decompression can make its body expand and collapse into a shapeless mass. Much like the open ocean, the seafloor is divided into zones. Right next to the coast is the continental shelf. Then the seafloor begins to slope down into the twilight and midnight zones. This is the continental slope. It is the transition between Earth's continental surface and Earth's oceanic seafloor. Both the continental shelf and continental slope are enriched by nutrients washed off the land. Then comes the abyssal plain, that accounts for about 70% of the world's seafloor. Less than 5% of food produced at the surface will make its way to the abyssal plain. Most of this food comes in great bursts as a result of phytoplankton blooms. When the phytoplankton are gone, many animals that were living off the phytoplankton die and sink to the seafloor. The sudden arrival of food on the seafloor, such as when a whale dies and sinks to the bottom, can prompt creatures from afar to congregate at the site. Whale falls can act as a source of food for years and provide for millions of creatures over its duration. The location, size of the whale, and depth of the seafloor can affect what animals show up. First, predators like sleeper sharks and black hagfish are attracted to the smell of the carcass. Hagfish are blind and jawless. Crabs, lobsters, and brittle stars also make their way over. Even after the skeleton is picked clean, specialized worms and snails bore into the skeleton and feed. Bacteria invade and decompose the remaining bones. In volcanically active areas deep beneath the ocean surface, where sunlight does not penetrate, towers called hydrothermal vents spew hot water from within the Earth's crust. Hydrothermal communities were first discovered in 1977, perplexing scientists with their diversity and abundance of life. Essentially, seawater makes its way through the cracks in the Earth's crust until it reaches hot magma. As the water is heated, it absorbs metals like iron, zinc, and copper from the surrounding rocks. The hot water rises and carries these minerals to the surface of the seafloor. At the surface, the hot, mineral-rich water meets cool ocean water. This event sparks chemical reactions and forms solid deposits. The deposits create towers over time. Coloration of the vents vary depending on the primary minerals that are being released. The heated water can be up to 752 degrees Fahrenheit. The high pressure of the deep ocean stops the water from boiling. Animal communities can vary greatly between vent systems. Clams, mussels, shrimp, and huge worms often thrive around these vents. Many animals at vents, such as the giant tube worm and the yeti crab, rely on energy produced by symbiotic bacteria. The bacteria either live on the surface of the animals or inside them. Since the bacteria cannot use light as an energy source, they produce energy through chemosynthesis, a chemical reaction that uses minerals from the vents. Yeti crabs wave their arms in the water to help cultivate bacteria on tiny arm hairs. They then consume the cultivated bacteria. A vent fish called an eel pout feeds on mussels, shrimp, and crabs living around vents. Many of the species around hydrothermal vents are found nowhere else in the world. In addition to hydrothermal vents and whale falls, the seafloor is home to many other habitats that attract a variety of organisms. 
Some of these habitats are brine lakes, cold seeps, deep sea reefs, canyons, and seamounts. Brine lakes exist at the bottom of the ocean. They are incredibly salty pools of water. The extreme saltiness causes the water to be significantly denser than average ocean water. The two do not mix. The salt content is so high that creatures that fall into these lakes often die. However, brine lakes are also high in methane and bacteria that can use the methane to produce energy. Animals like mussels and crabs feed on this bacteria by the lake's edge, often resulting in a whole community of organisms on the beach. Cold seeps exist at cracks in the Earth's crust, where fluids and gases like methane, trapped deep in the Earth, percolate up to the seafloor. They are called cold seeps simply because the fluids and gases are cooler than the scalding waters of hydrothermal vents. Organisms around cold seeps get their energy from the chemicals being released from the Earth. Like hydrothermal vents, this starts with bacteria that gain energy through chemical reactions, then to clams, worms, and mussels that use the bacteria, and on to predators like crabs and octopuses that eat the mollusks and worms. Deep sea reefs can be up to 20,000 feet below the ocean's surface, where water is icy and dark. Deep sea corals thrive here. Unlike shallow water corals, deep sea corals don't need sunlight. They obtain nutrients by trapping tiny organisms from passing currents in their polyps. Many animals, like squat lobsters and crabs, live among the coral. Deep sea corals were first discovered in 1869. Even before they were discovered, many deep sea reefs had already been severely damaged by trawls dragged across the seabed to catch bottom dwelling fish. Deep sea corals grow very slowly, sometimes only a fraction of an inch per year, making it hard for them to recover from damage. Some specimens of deep sea corals have been found to be thousands of years old. Deep canyons can stretch for hundreds of miles across the seafloor, serving as habitat for sea life. Deep sea corals attach to the rocky ledges. Worms and mollusks burrow at the muddy bottom. Fish find shelter within the canyon walls. Canyons act like funnels, collecting decaying matter. Currents suspend the collected nutrients into the water column, attracting small organisms that in turn attract large organisms. Sea mounts are underwater mountains that may rise thousands of feet above the seafloor. Sea mounts create an obstruction and influence the flow of currents. They enhance the spread of nutrients by bringing an upwelling of nutrients into the sunlit zone. Organisms like crabs, corals, anemones, and sea stars like to inhabit seamounts. Huge shoals of fish often live over seamounts. In the deep sea, animals use bioluminescence for many purposes. Some animals use light to lure prey towards their mouths, or simply as a flashlight to see better. The cookie cutter shark has a glowing underside that attracts large animals that it can sneak a bite out of. Deep sea anglerfish have glowing lures that lead prey straight to their mouth. Some creatures use flashy displays to attract mates or confuse predators. Bioluminescence can be used to help with camouflage with the use of counterillumination. This is a display of light that helps organisms blend into the background when viewed from below. Not all creatures spend both day and night in the deep ocean. Animals like sperm whales, leatherback sea turtles, and emperor penguins will make dives to the deep in search of food. Some organisms only migrate down to the deep ocean during the day to avoid predators. However, they migrate to the surface at night for food like phytoplankton. This is called deal vertical migration. Copepods are one of the many animals that take part in this daily migration. The scale of migration can be so large that it creates turbulence in the water, carrying nutrients and particles to places they wouldn't otherwise be found. 
Scientists explore the ocean using a variety of underwater vehicles. Human-occupied vehicles, called HOVs, carry scientists to the deep sea. Other unmanned underwater vehicles allow scientists to study the places that they can't go. Scientists can steer remotely operated vehicles, called ROVs, while they are in ships at the surface. A cable links the ships to the ROVs. Autonomous underwater vehicles, or AUVs, have no cable, but they must be pre-programmed. Hybrid vehicles called HROVs combine some of the features of both ROVs and AUVs. The oceans are becoming increasingly exploited for their resources. Human effects now reach the farthest corners and depths of ocean ecosystems. Despite the scarcity of living organisms, plastic debris has been found at the bottom of the Hadal Zone in the Mariana Trench. This is because most of the debris deposited in the ocean sinks. Microplastics have been found in the guts of amphipods in the Hadal Zone. Fisheries catches have continued to increase in depth over the years. This is detrimental to deep sea fish like roughies that are incredibly long lived and slow to reproduce. Industrial interest in deep sea mineral extraction is at an all time high. So far, the focus has been on exploring the deep sea and assessing the size and extent of mineral deposits. There is a global demand for minerals such as cobalt, zinc, copper, nickel, and rare earth elements, which are enriched in seamount crusts and hydrothermal vents. Pollution from mining processes could wipe out entire species, even those that have yet to be discovered. With advances in ocean technology, many amazing creatures have been spotted for the first time in the past decade. Only the future will tell what extraordinary animals and habitats will be found in the deep sea next. For more marine facts, click the subscribe button.